We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night's questions. Tonight's question comes from Craig Kennedy, posted on Facebook to ask, what would you recommend for a narrative adventure game that a six-year-old could play? I'm thinking of either Mice and Mystics or Stuffed Fables. Well, thanks for the great question, Craig. So quickly, I'll just say, of those two, Stuffed Fables is the better choice. Interestingly, I tried playing Mice and Mystics with my girls when they were right about that age. While they enjoyed it, the game was honestly too much for them. There was just too much going on, too many things to track, and too many options. The only reason that it worked is that mom and dad pretty much held their hands, and the main thing they did was roll dice and tell us what the results were. Now, Stuff Fables is a much simpler game that also features a more kid-friendly story and theme. My kids were more into mass market kids games at that age, which unfortunately don't tend to feature too much of the narrative or adventure focusing, focusing more on the basic skill development yes. instead. Now, due to the fact Craig mentioned Mice Mystics and Stuff Fables, I'm going to assume that they're mainly looking for board game suggestions. So tonight's list is going to reflect that. That said, just in case they're open to the concept of role-playing games, I do have a few recommendations there as well. And while at least one of the board games I'll be mentioning, actually a couple of the board games I'll be mentioning, do have some RPG elements in them and definitely some storytelling elements. The other important thing to note before we start, every kid is different. Yeah. And you know your kids better than we do. Having two kids, both of us have two kids, yeah. we know very well how different they can be and how one kid's progression can mm -hmm. vary from the other. Especially at this age, your kid's abilities could be very different from another six-year-old. Yes. And at this age, at least as far as gaming is concerned, board gaming is concerned, tabletop gaming, uh, the biggest skill that is going to be a variable here is the ability to read. This is going to be a big factor in which games they'll be able to enjoy and how much they'll enjoy them. Now, I made this list assuming that the child in question has at best a rudimentary reading level, and if any, and that the table would be helping them. So the adults at the table or older siblings or whatever would be working with them and coaching the kids playing. They wouldn't just be able to take the game and go play it in the other room, for example. As usual for these game recommendations lists, the following <clears throat> games are in no particular order. Nope, not at all. Though, like, there's a theme kind of in a way, and I kind of picked them out based on my shelves. But so number one, uh, we're going to start off with Stuff Fables, right? I mentioned this just a few seconds ago in a direct replay to, reply to Craig's question. And, but I really do strongly recommend this story-based game for younger kids for a few reasons. For one, the story is much more kid-friendly when compared to Mice and Mystics and some of the other storybook games. You are playing a young child stuffed animals we're going to be guarding her during her first sleep in their big girl bed. This, of course, leads you to battling the monsters from under the bed and getting sucked into their world and on an adventure that features a lot more than just battling bad guys. Now, two things that worry me about this game and playing with a six-year-old is that there is a lot of reading at each chapter. So like the introduction to the chapter is basically a storybook and the game is quite long usually taking over an hour to two hours to play just one chapter, one page of the book. So your kid has to be willing to be read to or read and keep focus for a long period of time. I know many kids that don't have the passion for that. Now that said, as long as you have somewhere to keep the game set up, I don't see any reason you would have to finish a full chapter every time you sit down and play. You should be able to basically stop and say, you know what, the next time it's mom's turn, we're going to stop here and we can play more tomorrow. Now, once you do finish Stuff Fables, there's also a big box expansion called Oh Brother that was released in the middle of the pandemic. So not a lot of fanfare about this one, but it includes a totally new story, new challenges, new enemies and new fables to tell. Now, if you manage to get through both of those, that's where I would recommend perhaps looking into Mice and Mystics for a similar storybook system with a little more crunch to it and a little bit more adult story. Well, not even adult, older kid story. There, there, there's kidnapping and stuff involved instead of stuffed animals battling dolls. So that would be my recommendation for next step. And by the time you get through all that, your kid's probably not six anymore anyway. So they'll probably be able to enjoy the game even more. Well, that was Stuffed Fables and its expansion, Oh Brother. 
Now, next, I want to move to a game or rather series of games that don't have either of these problems. No tons of reading, no long play time. This is Rory Story Cubes. Now, Rory Story Cubes are a set of custom dice with symbols on them instead of numbers. And they come and need their dice sets of six or eight, and I don't remember off the top of my head, even though I've got three packs behind me. Um, they're sold in theme sets, so you can get like actions, voyages, clues, as well as now they have licensed packs, like you can get Batman, Star Wars, and Doctor Who. Now, each set comes with a number of games you can play, which all involve the players telling a story, improvising. Sometimes together, where you're telling a joint story where like you're going to use a die, then the next player has to incorporate another die, and then the next player has to incorporate a die. Other times, you're rolling your dice for yourself and trying to make a story of your dice and so on. I personally found Rory Story Cubes to be fantastic to play with our kids, even when they were younger than six, due to their love of storytelling. Most kids are going to recognize symbols at a young age and be able to tell you fascinating things all about the little stick man on the die. We found the reaction, or, sorry, restrictions added by the cubes actually were fantastic, as opposed to um, just telling a full improv story. It actually worked as inspiration for my girls instead of a limitation by having to use the dice as opposed to just sitting down and having them tell a story. Sometimes a little bit of structure is all you need. Mm -hmm. And that was Rory's Story Cubes. Now, sticking with improv storytelling, but adding more game to it, my next game is Dungeons & Dragons Adventure Begins. Now, despite having the D&D name on the box and featuring D&D creatures and locations, this game is nowhere near as complicated as the full role-playing game. It's honestly not even really a role-playing game. It's more of an improv experience and even more of an improv experience than even a, a real game. Now, what I do recommend here is if you've got a non-reader, you let the readers take turns being the GM, because that's one of the things in the game, the GM role rotates. Just skip over that for the non-readers and let them play their characters and describe their characters' actions and roll the dice. Now, while I didn't introduce this one to my kids until they were older, I am certain I would have played this with them and they would have loved it when they were younger had it been out. Now, for a lot more information on this game and why I don't really recommend it for older kids or as an introduction to Dungeons & Dragons, check out my review through our podcast, the blog, or YouTube. And that was D&D Adventure Begins. Now, for a dungeon crawler with a lot more game to it and removing the improv storytelling aspects, I would actually recommend Hero Quest now that it's back in print. This is the classic Games Workshop board game that I grew up playing. Now, the only real reading required here is on the part of Zargon, the player playing the adversary, and for the spells that the elf and wizard have to cast. So have your non-reader play the Dwarf or the Barbarian, and you should be good on that count. Now, while your kids may need help with strategy and how to play the rules and maybe going shopping, they're going to love seeing the 3D components on the boards, exploring the dungeons, playing with the miniatures, and rolling dice to battle monsters. A nice touch on this is the dice use symbols. You don't even need to count or add up pips when playing this game. I know many parents who have introduced their younger kids to Hero Quest over the years, starting at very young ages in some cases. And that was Hero Quest, once more available new in stores. Yes, new in stores. Now, sticking with the theme of adventure, but going back to cooperative games, next I want to suggest Chronicles of Avil. This is a four player tower defense game where players collect equipment through a unique touch based bag pulling system, explore a hex map, and prepare to defend the castle from a horde of monsters and the beasts. Now, some of the things a young kid will really enjoy is getting to draw and color their own character, create heraldry for the character, the very cool inventory system, and the whimsical fantasy world, the non-threatening monsters in this game. Now, the cooperative nature means players can easily coach kids having difficulty. Now, our family has really been enjoying this game, and we've honestly had just as much fun playing with kids as with other adults. This is up there with Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters as one of the best kids games I've ever played, bar none. Now, learn more about Chronicles of Avil later in the show, as it's our featured review tonight. And that was Chronicles of Avil, which isn't quite available in North America yet, oh. but should be soon. 
Now, speaking of ghost fighting treasure hunters, any long-term fan of the show knows I can't make a kid's game list with including this great cooperative game. Now, there isn't a lot of story in this game, but it does have a story-ish theme, and it's got that adventure side. You are sneaking into a haunted mansion, battling ghosts, and trying to collect a number of treasures and get them out of the house. Now, this uses the popular cooperative mechanic of everyone does something, then something bad happens. And in this case, the bad is the house filling with ghosts. If you ever get three ghosts in the same room, they become a haunt. And once you get too many haunts, the players lose. Now, along with this one, there is also the Creepy Cellar expansion that I think makes a great game even better. It adds some new twists while making the game a bit easier due to some randomness mitigation that was uh, badly needed. No way. And that, like almost every list of children's games, is <laughs> Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. I need non-cooperative kids games, and then I can't, you know, somehow wedge it in there. Now, my final board game for tonight is another cooperative one that actually has a bit in common with Avil, as that it also uses bags. Though this time it's a bag builder, kind of like a deck builder, but with a bag, and that is Talisman Legendary Tales. This is a scenario-based campaign game where players are exploring, fighting bad guys, and trying to complete quests on a very tight time limit. Now, the game uses bag building where each asymmetric character gets their own bag with their own set of little chips in it. Fights are done by drawing tiles from your bags, hoping to pull the right symbols depending on which monsters you're fighting. Now, as you defeat monsters, you can also earn more items which then get added to your bag. Now, unlike Avil, the tokens in this one are all the same size and shape. So this doesn't have that feeling thing. It's just using the bag as a random element where you're pulling random things. This features some great, great cooperative rules where you can actually pull from another player's bag. So if your wizard gets in a fight and it's against an orc and you need the fighter's help, you can get the fighter to pull from their bag to help. There's a lot going on in this game, though I will admit for Talisman fans, this is pretty far detached from the original board game. Well, that was Talisman Legendary Tales, not just Talisman. Yes. Next, I want to highlight a couple of actual role-playing games, actual story games that I think are great for kids, starting with Mermaid Adventures. Now, this was the first role-playing game I introduced my personal kids to, and it was around that age period. Now, this is a very kid-friendly role-playing game that uses a really simple dice pool mechanic tied to only three stats, where the big thing it encourages players to do is to come up with reasons to use their best stat to solve things and solve things without fighting or combat. You also have unique mermaid abilities for all the different mermaid types because they're not just fishmen in this. You've got shark men and, and, and um, I can't draw a complete blank, octopus women and so on. You have all kinds of different sea creature, mer creatures, and you're trying to use your abilities and your items to try to overcome problems. And the more things you have on your side, the more dice you roll. Now, the thing with this one, and this is an unfortunate caveat I have to add, is that you want to find the first printing of Mermaid Adventures and not the second printing, which is actually a source book for the PIP system, which is much less kid-friendly. Now, find out more about both versions of this game over on the blog. And that was Mermaid Adventures first edition, not the newer PIP system rules, which aren't, again, aren't as kid-friendly. Next up, I have Hero Kids. Now, this is a role-playing game specifically designed to be played by kids ages 4 to 10. So it's right in that right wheelhouse. Now, this is very much a generic fantasy system set up to be a stepping stone to more traditional fantasy role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder. Now, this also uses a D6 dice pool systems, features short one hour or less sessions, 10 different types of heroes you can play and so on. Now, if I had known this existed at the time, I certainly would have played this with my girls. And that was Hero Kids. And now we have some honorable mentions. So the first one I found with doing research for this topic, looking at various other people's lists and game recommendations for, for storytelling and and adventure games for kids, and it's Ebu E E B O O storytelling cards. And as soon as I saw those, I was like, "Oh, these are like Rory Story Cubes, but instead of being dice, it's a full deck of cards, all featuring whimsical artwork." 
And it wasn't just like one image. It was a bunch of things going on, like a bunch of rabbits in a carriage and there's wind blowing. So there's multiple things you can pull from. And I was thinking this is cool. And it has, again, a variety of different improv storytelling games where you're trying to play the cards out of your hand or you're trying to collect them or you're drafting and passing to other players. And I got to say, the main reason I wanted to bring this one up is also because looking at these pictures, I was struck with the thought that you could do this with any artwork heavy game that you already own. Dixit and Mysterium being the two that obviously came to mind for me for the whimsical artwork. So this would be a great way for a gamer parent to use a game they already own to make a kid's improv game experience. And that's Ibu Storytelling Cards. Next, I have Andor, the fan family fantasy game. In a way, not to be confused with Legends of Andor, though it is based on this. This is a simplified version of Legends of Andor series of games, which honestly are fantastic cooperative puzzle games from Cosmos that I strongly recommend the adults check out if they're looking for a cooperative fantasy adventure. Well, Andor, not Legends of Andor, just Andor is a cooperative fantasy game where everyone's going to take on a role of a character whose asymmetric and unique abilities who are on epic quest that features rescuing a pack of wolf cubs before the dragon reaches the castle. Now, this one looks great. Uh, it says eight plus on the box, but I've noticed all Board Game Geek has it set as recommended at six plus. As a fan of Andor, this looks fantastic. If my girls were younger, I would probably pick it up, but now they can play the full game. And that's Andor, the family fantasy game. Now, my last one tonight. I think is an important one that I wanted to make sure I put on the list. And this is Starport. Now, this is a role-playing game that's mashing fantasy and sci-fi. You've got dragons and you've got spaceships. You've got outer space and you've got, you know, the, the fairy glens. This is doing something completely different from pretty much every other game on the list, including the role-playing games and the board games, because this game features zero reference to any shooting, hitting, slashing, or fighting of enemies. Now, it's designed for kids aged 5 to 12, and there's another one that I wish was around when my girls were younger. I love the fact that they have removed combat, so there will be conflict, but no combat in the game whatsoever. And that was Starport. Now, I actually have an honorable mention here for mm -hmm. Amazing Tales by Martin Lloyd. Now, while I haven't played Amazing Tales, I have played with Amazing Heroes, the supers version of this system, and I can say that it's very easy and straightforward for a parent to guide their children through adventures with, with the parent nice. being the GM. And that was Amazing Tales by Martin Lloyd. And that's it for our list of great narrative and adventure games for playing with a six-year-old. Now we're here. Oh, and for us. You, you froze. You want to try that oh, again? Sure. <laughs> We're here to answer your gaming and game night questions. If you've got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. 